Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In my last video about the government TSP, I recommended that people contribute to the C fund. However, I didn't take the time to explain what exactly the C fund is. In today's video, we're gonna go over the 10 different investment funds that you're capable of investing in and what exactly are they and how do they work? Okay, once you've logged on to the TSP's website, it can be a little overwhelming. You might start clicking on, for example, investment funds and then click on performance and you'll start seeing a whole bunch of numbers and it, it just looks a little strange. And unfortunately, the TSP website, in my opinion, does not do a good job of explaining what exactly is your money, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars you're contributing, what exactly is it being invested in and how do investments even work? So first thing to know is you don't really need to care about the life cycle funds. The life cycle funds are just mixtures of the other five funds. For example, the L2020 is about 67% G and then 13% C. The L2050 is 40% uh, C, 7% F. So the life cycle funds are not themselves individual funds. They're just combinations of the other five. So if we narrow it down to these five, you basically only have to know two concepts. And the first one is the G and the F are debt securities and the C, S and I are equity securities. And the more common uh, names you might know these by are bonds and stocks. So the F and the G fund are bonds and a bond is a debt instrument with the promise to pay back money over a predetermined amount of time with interest. And there is supposed to be, most of the time, a guarantee that you will get that interest when the bond matures. Stocks are completely different. For a stock, you're buying a share of the equity in a company. If the company becomes more valuable, your share of the equity becomes more valuable. Some companies uh, offer dividends, which is they have quarterly earning reports and then they decide to pay out their uh, profits to all of their shareholders. Not all companies do this, but many large companies do. So bonds and stocks are completely different instruments. They work entirely different. You just need to know that G and F are bonds, C, S, and I are stocks. So the G fund stands for Government Securities Investment Fund, and this is short-term U.S. Treasury securities. You might also hear them be called notes or deposits. And this is money that we are loaning to the U.S. government and the government is agreeing to pay it back to us in a certain amount of time with interest. Everyone usually knows this, but people like the G fund because this money is guaranteed. You will never lose money in the G fund. However, the way that interest rates are, you're not going to be making much more than inflation. The F fund is the fixed income index investment fund, and this is tracked by the Bloomberg Barclays U.S. aggregate bond index. These are agency bonds, asset-backed asset securities, corporate and non-corporate bonds. For the purposes of this video, all you need to know is that sometimes municipalities or corporations will issue debt in the form of bonds in order to raise more money. They do this instead of is issuing more shares, but it's just a way for a company or a municipality or agency to raise money. And like government bonds, uh, they agree over a certain amount of time to pay them back with interest. The C fund is the common stock index investment fund, and this is Standard & Poor, the rating agency's 500 largest companies in America. Frequently on the news, you might hear this be called the S&P 500. And this is, once again, America's 500 large to medium-sized companies. And these are all the companies you know by name. Amazon, Ford, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, GE, Microsoft, Visa. When you're investing in the C fund, you're investing in, in, in well-known companies. The S fund stands for Small Cap Stock Index Investment Fund, and these are small to medium-sized companies that are not included in the S&P 500. A lot of these companies you wouldn't recognize, I didn't recognize them, I looked at the list, and the only companies that I could really identify by name is Tesla. Tesla's probably gonna be included in the S&P 500 soon, but as of now, it's not. Also the Sands Las Vegas Casino, I've, I've heard of that at least. So those are smaller companies. On the New York Stock Exchange, there are over 2,800 traded companies that are regulated by the SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. 
And the C fund tracks the top 500, and the S fund tracks basically everything else, the other 2,000 or so companies. Now, when you think about the total stock market value, the top 500 big ones uh, represent 80% of the total stock market value. The, the S fund represents the other 20%. The I fund stands for the International Stock Index Investment Fund, and this is tracked by Morgan Stanley's Europe, Australasia, and Far East Index. And these are still very large, well-known companies, but they're just not included in the New York Stock Exchange. These are companies like Japanese Toyota, Korean Samsung, British Petroleum, and Royal Dutch Shell. All right, so this is something that I had to figure out, but I want to explain to you that when you invest in the fund, you're not really investing in these companies. You're just investing in the fund. And we'll take the C fund as an example. And the way I like to explain it to people is think of two buckets. And these two buckets always have to remain equal. On the left side, you're going to have it be managed by an algorithm or a robot. The company that's actually in charge of managing the fund is BlackRock Institutional Trust Company, but it's basically a, a computer doing all the work. And the other bucket belongs to the shareholders or the investors. That's you and I participating in the government TSP. Now, the robot is going to buy shares of these companies on the New York Stock Exchange, Microsoft, Amazon, Visa, Ford, and it's gonna create a fund with a certain number of shares in it. People then buy these shares at the share price. What is the share price? We'll say the value of all of the companies in the left bucket managed by the robot is worth $400. And only four shares exist. Each share would then be worth $100. We're grossly oversimplifying this. These funds have hundreds of billions of dollars in them, and there are probably millions of shares that uh, exist. Now, these investment funds are open-ended, meaning that people can get in and out of them at any time. How exactly does that work? Let's say it's the end of the month and I just got paid and I have 10% of my check taken out and put into the C fund. There's currently four shares and I'm going to basically add a share to the other side. I just purchased a share and I do this by giving the robot money. So I'm gonna give whatever the current value of the share price is, in this case $100, to the robot. That robot then uses the money to purchase more stocks. Whatever is next on his list to have a balanced or an equal amount of the S&P 500, it'll then purchase whatever's next. The fund is then going to increase its total value to $500, and there are now five shares in existence. Each share is still worth the same price, $100. Buying and selling shares within the investment fund doesn't change the stock price. I'm oversimplifying this because buying and selling stocks does affect the share price, supply and demand, but for the purpose of this video, when you're buying and selling shares within the investment funds, it's not actually affecting Microsoft or Visa or Ford. In that way, this fund is very flexible. Now let's say that the economy is doing really well and global stock prices are rising and our investment fund doubles. It was worth $500 total, and it's now worth a thousand. What happens to the share prices? The share prices have all doubled from $100 each to 200. Now let's say for whatever reason you wanna get out of the fund, either you're gonna be retiring soon and you're gonna make a withdrawal, or for whatever reason you wanna switch your distributions to the G fund, how do you sell shares? It's pretty simple. A share is simply removed. The robot then compensates. Now, usually there's a certain amount of liquidity in the funds between three and 5% of its value. So when people wanna get out, they just pay you back whatever your, whatever your share value is worth. If they don't have the money, then they have to start selling shares of Ford or Visa to decrease the size of the fund in order to pay you out. The buckets then rebalance, and once again, you have $800 uh, worth of stocks on the left, and then four shares, each share worth $200 on the right. And that is a very simplified uh, explanation of how these investment funds work. And it's the same for all five. The G, the F, the C, the S, and I, they're basically doing the same thing, where whenever you make contributions and pay in, it doesn't really affect the share price. And when you want to then transfer or withdraw, once again, it doesn't really affect the share price because both buckets between the shareholders and what's what assets are actually being managed have to constantly match. 
And as I mentioned earlier in the video, the life cycle funds are just mixtures of the other five. In my next video, I'm gonna talk about the life cycle funds and specifically why I don't like them. However, I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up so other people can find it. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. I post weekly about military and finance topics. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave me a comment down below. I will respond to you. And until the next video, guys, take care.